Welcome to our cloud coaching session. Today we talk about OCI Generative AI services and we will uh, show you the design and development of an innovative uh, application which can assist you in generating RFX responses. Uh, for today, our partner in Oracle um, the marketing team is providing to everybody attending the call um, a an Oracle free tier promo. So what you need to do to get this promo is to take the link uh, that you will get from us in the follow up email. You do the registration, follow the registration with the same email that you use for um, uh, to register for this call. And in case you don't see the promo banner uh, on your screen after you do the sign up, feel free to um, to ping us on Slack. Uh, the promo consists in $500 in free, free credit that you can use to test and play with our services for a 30 days period time. Um, with that, I would like to pass over to Luigi. Luigi, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, You're welcome. To share my screen. Can you see my slide? Yeah. Yes. Okay, okay. thank you. Okay, very quick introduction, uh, Luigi. I, Luigi Seta. I've been working in Oracle for a rather long time, but the interesting things may for, for you who give some context on my background. Uh, I have a degree in physics and I started studying uh, uh, AI uh, when I was at the first year in a university. But at the day in that year, there were really not uh, um, easy applications for AI. It was all theory. And so I stopped and then I did other things. Then in 2018, I started uh, revamping my interest in uh, data science, machine learning, and then AI. And I did some specialization, especially on the Coursera platform. And then after I joined the first the data science uh, specialist team, and now I am part of the AI specialist team in, in EMEA. Okay. Uh, the, how it is organized, the presentation. Only a few slides just to introduce you some concept. I've seen from the uh, the polling from the that we have done that less, uh, at least uh, forty percent of you have already worked with generative AI. So, um, the, as uh, Violetta said, the, the cloud coaching will be mostly a practical cloud coaching with the demo. But I want to um, introduce you some concept and to clarify some concepts that I think are useful. In the demo, that's important. We will be using only uh, cloud services that are all general availability. So this slide is only because it is part of the normal Oracle processes. What is the agenda? First of all, we want to um, define the context of what we are talking about, uh, a few words about the process. And then we will enter into the details that we have developed to support the process. Uh, just to give you an idea, we started working with two customers in EMEA. One, I'm uh, Italian and I'm based in the now I'm in Boom. Uh, one in Italy and another one in another country in Europe. And then uh, we uh, talked about the usage of these two with many uh, teams and customers around the world. And we had tried to, let's say, abstract and uh, create something that is more general. So we will see a set of tools that in our view are in some way modular. You can use all these tools uh, to support the process, or you can use only some of these tools. And uh, as you can see, finally, there is an evaluation tool, even if the evaluation part is not this one. Obviously, these tools are based on uh, Oracle uh, AI Cloud Services, uh, and uh, I will give you details about the tools uh, and the cloud services that I used. Uh, there are four demos during uh, this, uh, this, uh, this day. First of all, let's uh, set the context. We are talking about RFX. RFX means a request for, uh, could be a request for information, could be a request for proposal, could be a request for quote or for tender. In addition, uh, these tools are not meant only to give the answers. For example, if we are talking about a request for proposal, you can work on one side and in the demo, I will take that role 
So I will uh, mostly uh, consider a situation where you have a request for proposal and you want to answer to all or some of the questions contained in the request for proposal. But actually, and it will become more clear, I hope, at the end of, uh, towards the end of the presentation, you can use this tool also on the other side with the other role, the role of who is uh, uh, dedicated to prepare the request for proposal. At the, uh, at the bottom, you need only in an Excel sheet to define uh, as clearly as possible what you want to achieve in natural language. So if you require, for example, to create a two page document that describe your company and what is the purpose for this request for proposal, if you have the documentation inside your knowledge base, the documentation that we will be using, you can use this tool also to prepare the request for proposal, so in both sides. What are the areas that need to be covered? So we start to um, talk about the process. In our idea, there are three main areas. The first and probably one of the most important part is the management of the documentation. Because you want not only to use generative AI, but you want that uh, the content generated by AI is based on the documentation and especially on the documentation that is managed inside your company. So probably private documentation. And during the demo, we will be focusing on using documentation in a private vector store and not taken from internet for several reasons. Because for example, these are private documentation and not public, and also because we want to control the quality of the documentation that is used. So the first tool, and there are two small demos, uh, are regarding how to load the document inside the knowledge base and uh, how to manage the knowledge base. For example, adding more documents if you discover that some areas are not perfectly covered. The central part of the demo is uh, uh, on the tool that we have developed to produce the content. As I said, the content will be the answer to all the questions. For example, if you are working on a request for information or you are working on a request for proposal. But as I said, simply writing an, an Excel sheet what you want to achieve, it can also be used to produce the actual request for information or request for proposal. And this is the demo number three. Then uh, the final part. Uh, we, uh, talking with the customer, also understood that some requirements are regarding how to evaluate the content that is produced with the assistance from AI. Evaluation is not an easy area, probably is uh, the most complicated area. First of all, we want to ensure that the evaluation is uh, aligned with uh, human people okay and second and this is uh, let's say a general rules regarding the tools that we will uh, see in this uh, uh, cloud coaching session these are tools that are meant for end user people that may be as uh, expert uh, in the matters uh, in the area we are working on on the content but are not big expert of generative ai so these are not tools, and especially the evaluating tool is not a tool for data scientists that maybe are interested in metrics like uh, it ratio on mean reciprocal rank, but tools that should give uh, an easy to understand answer to the question, is the content uh, complete? Is the content accurate? So something that uh, from a subject matter expert in the content and not the tools is easy to understand. As I said, we are using uh, cloud services, <laughs> as you can, can expect. In, uh, in red, you see the area. The, this slide shows the, how complete is Oracle cloud offering regarding uh, uh, artificial intelligence. We are using uh, only services in these three big areas. So to manage uh, the content, the documentation, we are using a better store that is based on the new technology that we have added to Oracle database, what we call Oracle AI Vector Search. But uh, there is also, and if it is of interest to you, we can talk uh, separately, 
some support for other kind of vector store, for example, open search in Oracle Cloud infrastructure. Regarding uh, the indexing and the generation of the content, we are using uh, models uh, as a service as part of our OCI generative AI offering. Then to link, to create the glue between uh, all these services, uh, the management of the content, uh, the uh, vectorization, the generation of the answer, we need the, some glue. Everything has been developed using Python, that is uh, the most widely used uh, language in this area. Uh, and in my demo, everything is running on my MacBook and is calling the cloud services in the Frankfurt region to give some, you some additional information. But as you can imagine, in a production environment, you would want to run this part, the orchestration part, for example, in a, virtual, in a Linux virtual machine hosted in the same region, and it will be obviously faster. Or you can use a container instance uh, again on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Then for additional things, you can think to add uh, for a customized approach other of the services that you see on this slide. Only, as I said, it's utilized just to give some information to understand the flow of the demo. First of all, we start with the management of the documentation, what I call the knowledge management. The vector store, this is the name that is normally used in this kind of generative AI solution, is the place where we manage the documentation in order to enable what is called the, the semantic search. Semantic search means that you search the documentation not based on keywords, but based on uh, uh, the content, uh, the semantic uh, of the query and the content of the document. The magic, the AI magic that enables this uh, is uh, the translation of a text in a vector that you see here is called an embedding vector. Why we do this? Because if we are able to capture the content of a text and the meaning of that text in a vector, to find all the documents that are closer to the request is easy for a computer. You need only to compute. The computer needs only to compute the distance between the vector, the kind of distance that we have learned at the high school. Okay. Now we need to take all the document and store uh, this document. Uh, our private documentation uh, inside uh, a private copy, totally protecting uh, the privacy and your intellectual property in your tenant. And to do that, we are using a vector store that is based on uh, Oracle database technology. In the demo, we will see that we will be collecting uh, documents uh, books uh, with all the information needed to generate the answer in what we call a collection. It's simple. A collection is implemented as a table in the Oracle database schema I'm accessing. You can have as many collection as you want in your database schema. So for example, in this slide, I show two collection. One that is on the top all books, and the second one, that is the one that I will be using during the demo, that is called the cloud coaching. Oracle has implemented this feature as extension to Oracle database technology. We are using Python to simplify the development of the code. We are using an open source library that is called the LangChain, and LangChain simplifies the things. So in the Oracle integration with language chain, the table has these four uh, fields. We are saving everything in one table. If you want to use the full capability of Oracle database, you can uh, create different uh, schemas, but language chain simplifies the things in this way. In the column text, you have the text, then there is the embeddings, and you can add uh, some metadata with additional information. For the purpose of what we are doing and what we are seeing in this demo, in the metadata, we need only two fields. One source uh, that you see here, that is uh, the name of the PDF document from uh, where the uh, contents come from. And uh, the second one is the page. Okay, 
The first demo that we will uh, uh, look at uh, is the one that shows how to load the document inside the, the vector store. It's simple, the architecture is really simple because we need only two services from the cloud. The one that is needed to take the chunk of the text and to create the embedding vectors and it is based on an error network and we will be using a model that is provided from Quira. Since I'm working with customer all around, like all the people in my team all around EMEA, uh, I will be using a multilingual uh, um, model that supports all the languages used around the world. The second cloud service is, is the Oracle database that implements the AI vector store. And I will be using the Oracle based database services. Then there is the orchestration part. The first tool that I will show you is the tool that can be used, the demo number one, that can be used to, to, to do the batch loading, the massive loading. Let's say that for the purpose of, of your task, you need to load 20 pages form, 20 books or PDF or other documents inside your company, you want to do a first ingestion, taking all the documents that you have uh, saved inside a directory or maybe uh, a bucket in the object storage. You start doing the massive loading and embeddings of all the pages. And then I will show you in the demo number two, a second uh, um, uh, UI, a second tools with the graphical user interface where you can, for example, add some more documents. And I think it is time for the first demo. Okay, so I'm going to show you, this one is the based on a UI in a command line interface. I have saved several books in one directory. So if, for example, we give a look to what is the content of the script that I've prepared in order to avoid any mistakes, you see, it's simply running this shell script that is based, that runs a Python programs with only two parameters. The names that I want to give to the collection inside the AI vector search database and the names of the directory where I have collected several documents. So I'm going to run it only to show you how it works and how it is fast. I'm going to enlarge the screen. So you see the list of the two documents that I'm loading. So there are some parameters in this uh, um, tools, the parameters are saved inside a configuration files. Okay. Normally the parameters that you can change are the maximum size of the chunk in characters and a certain overlap. The scroll barrier is uh, related to the longer step that uh, is where in batch modes, uh, it calls, it takes all the chunks of text, send in batch uh, uh, the chunks of text to the embedding models and gets back the embedding vectors, then text plus embeddings plus uh, metadata are sent to the database and are stored to the vector store. And you see at the end, it produces some uh, statistics around the distribution of the chunk clients, just to see if you have, uh, well, normally it happens that even if the max length here is 2000 characters, there are some variability because the tools behind the scene try to keep uh, the boundary of the sentence. Okay. I've done the first loading on my collection. So I want to give a look at what uh, I have uh, inside the collection. And so I'm running the demo number two. The demo number two has uh, a nice uh, uh, UI interface. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm co connecting uh, to an Oracle database. So all the security of the Oracle database applies. Again, in a configuration file, there are the credentials to connect securely to the Oracle database. And I can only see the um, collection, the tables in the schema I am allowed to connect. So you see, uh, I have a list of collection, the one demo books that I have loaded with demo now, number one, and I have other collection. So uh, for example, if I choose the cloud coaching collection that I've loaded this morning, uh, and we will be using for demo number three, you see that we have uh, several book loaders, not only the database concept and the AI vector search that I loaded in the 
demo books collection uh, one minute ago, but other books. And with this one, uh, I can, uh, for example, uh, choose from my um, computer some other books and decide to add. Or also I can choose on the screen, uh, for example, if I made a mistake, I can choose one of these and I can uh, decide to drop it because uh, it was a mistake. During the loading, uh, if I'm aware of what it means, I can decide to change some parameters or I can decide to keep, uh, well, every time we try to uh, strike a balance between uh, giving power to user and uh, enable to choose something, or give some uh, reasonable uh, uh, defaults in order to keep the things uh, easy to do. If you want, you can also create a new collection directly from the two. So I need to provide only the name of the new collection, then choose one or more books to add, okay? If I return back to the uh, list, uh, we will be using uh, this uh, second collection, Cloud Coaching, for the rest of the demo. And you, you see, we have loaded before some uh, books from the Oracle database uh, uh, documentation, optical documentation. But since I have also questions regarding generative AI, I've also loaded some uh, uh, research web paper taken from uh, archive in order to be able to answer to some more uh, detailed questions that could be of interest to you. Okay, so you see here uh, the list of all the documentation that I have available. All the questions that we will manage with the tool in demo number three will be answered using the documentation that is in my private vector store repository and in this uh, books. So enable from what is called the semantic search. Okay. Let's uh, return to the slides because I'm going to introduce uh, the third and the central part of the demo. So just to summarize, uh, the process uh, is uh, with the three steps. The first one, we have seen the first one, how to manage uh, the knowledge base, math loading of the um, of the documents inside the knowledge base and that, then with the tool in demo number two we the change all uh, the documents we can add more documents we can drop some documents now we are ready our collection inside in our vector store and i want to start the central part of the process the management of the questions and how we can answer to the questions so here is uh, we have two slides to describe uh, at the high level, the architecture of the central tool, the tool that I'm going to show you in uh, the demo number three. Basically, what, let's start from the uh, right. What cloud services are we using in order to take the question and uh, create an answer to those questions based on the documentation that we have loaded in the uh, vector store? We are again using uh, an embedding model because we need to take the question, the query, and to translate the question in an embedding vector in order to enable uh, the semantic search. We will be using uh, the vector store with the collection that we have loaded because there, there are all the chunks of text with their associated embeddings and with the metadata providing you the name of the initial documents and the pages of the documents. If we want and if we have, we can, so it is marked as optional, we can add a re-ranker. A re-ranker is not mandatory, but in some situation, it can improve the retrieval part of the process. Why? Because in some cases, only semantic search based on vector can provide you some documents not really relevant to answer to the question. A re-ranker works only to the initial list of documents uh, provided by the semantic search and compares the way fine grain kind of work, compares the content of only the document retrieved with the original question. And so it can help, for example, removing some distractor documents not really useful to answer to the question. And then there is uh, the large language model 
as you see, uh, there are some numbers showing uh, how they interact in the general flow. The large language model uh, is not used uh, to generate, uh, it's not only used to generate uh, the final uh, answer, but it is used also to uh, rephrase uh, the question uh, that is uh, used to do the retrieval in order to increase uh, the quality of the document retrieved. So uh, it, it's uh, used more than one time the, in the general process. And if we want to map uh, again uh, this uh, uh, conceptual building block back to the architecture to the cloud service, you see the icons. So the services on the right, OSI Generative AI for embeddings and also for, uh, uh, we have two kind of models in OSI Generative AI, the representative models, the one that translate text in embeddings, and uh, then, as you see on the bottom, uh, the large language model. And uh, for the AI vector search, we will be using uh, uh, an Oracle database in the cloud. Another interesting thing is that, that uh, we are working and it will be subject of another uh, cloud coaching i think uh, towards the end of the summer i'm working with a colleague erica in, in the integration with the application performance monitoring then let's go to demo number uh, three Okay, the third tool is the tool that uh, covers the central part of the process. We have uh, loaded all the documentation inside one collection in a the vector store based in Oracle AI vector search. And we want to, we have a set of questions. The idea is that uh, uh, the question, the request for we, what we want to achieve uh, have, be, have been written uh, and uh, the most simple tool that we decided to use is an Excel sheet. So I will be loading an Excel sheet where I have several uh, questions. As you can see, this tool has more options. Why? The philosophy is that we want to give choice to the user, even if it requires some uh, understanding, not really a deep understanding, but some understanding. First of all, the language, wide language. The language that you can choose here and you see the list of the languages that we are supporting right now is not because we want to localize the interface in the language. No, it's because we want to address a scenario where the documentation is in a different language than the target language. To be clear, let's make a concrete example. As I said, I'm Italian. So imagine that I am uh, involved in a task where I have a set of questions in Italian and I want the answer in correct Italian. But as often happens in technical work, the documentation in English. So I want to ensure that even if uh, a big part of the text that goes uh, as input to the language model is in English, I have the answer correctly in Italian, the target language. The list uh, that you see here enable me to specify the target language uh, in a way that I don't need to specify in the request uh, answer in Italian. Basically, what happens is that behind the scene, selecting the language from here, I select in a library of prompt, a prompt that is written, translated in the target language. In the demo, I will be using English, but if I choose Italian in a prompt or in the library of prompt, it will select a prompt that is in Italian and that says a uh, instruction answer in Italian. So we can choose uh, the target language. And we have seen that in this way, we get correctly, let's say 99% of the time, uh, a completely correct answer with all the support languages. Then there is the central part, uh, uh, where you can uh, make some choices regarding uh, the retrieval augmented generation process. Uh, I don't know if uh, all of you have heard about these uh, uh, terms. Retrieval augmented generation means uh, that uh, we want to answer 
based on the information in the documentation that have been stored inside the vector store. So the knowledge inside the language model is augmented from the knowledge that is inside the documentation retrieved and coming from the document that we have saved with the step number one and two inside the collection that we will be using. But RAG, well, uh, it's a term that was, start, was created, I think, some uh, 100 years and a half ago, has evolved because more and more patterns of implementing a RAG have uh, um, emerged. There are different ways. In classical RAG, you do research with the embeddings on the vector store and you simply add the documents to the question, to your query, and to the instruction that we have in the prompt, saying uh, which tone you want to use, the language in that you want to be used for the annual answer. But there are some ad advanced way of doing uh, retrieval augmented generation, for example, to improve the semantic search. And we have option here. Why options? Because uh, we have seen the experience shows that there is not a single perfect solution for every situation. It depends on the task you are working on, the kind of questions, the kind of request that you need to manage, and the documentation that you have. So with simple, simple choices on the left, you can decide if you have, for example, to add a re-ranker or to enable hybrid search. Hybrid search means that you, um, together with the semantic search, add the search that is based on keywords. Normally, semantic search is the best way to select documentation in the vector store, but sometimes for several, some kind of questions, uh, very simple, like uh, consider a question, what is hide? I will tell you what is hide in a second. Sir. Well, what is hide actually is only a keyword, hide. In that case, uh, a hybrid search that is based on frequency of terms inside the documentation can improve uh, the relevancy of documents returned from the search. And you can, uh, with the simple uh, tick here, experiment to see which one gives you the best results in your case. IDE is uh, query rewriting. IDE stands for hypothetical document embeddings. The idea is to use, uh, well, when we do RAG, uh, we don't want that the final answer is based on an internal knowledge from the language model, because we want to be able to ground the answer on your documentation, because behind the scene, there is uh, some fear of hallucination. But today, models are very powerful and they have some cost. So we want to use this model. We died, we take uh, the initial questions, uh, what is uh, semantic search, for example, and we ask to the model to generate uh, a document, a one page, for example, document that answer to the question, to that question. Then we embed not the original questions, but the hypothetical documents. Why? Because the idea is that the document is generated is more similar to the document that you have stored, uh, because often uh, the language, uh, the length, uh, the content of a short question is different from the documentation that has been planned. Generating this hypothetical document, you have uh, a search that is based on something that is more closer to your documents and maybe can, uh, 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 can improve the quality of the document returned from the search. Another interesting uh, uh, feature that is provided from the coherent model. You see here that we have also a choice uh, of the different the language model. These are all models that are of general availability. I'm using, as I said before, uh, um, cloud services in uh, Frankfurt region. These are available in all the region where we provide uh, uh, generative AI. We have had the London region, I think, uh, uh, around a week ago, and we will uh, add more and more region in the near future. So these are all uh, general availability cloud. If I choose, for example, LAMA, a citation is, uh, is uh, removed because uh, 
citation here means a fine grain citation. I, I will show you what is it. It's a feature, a net feature from queer models. So, for example, for the demo, I will choose uh, one the model from queer, the Command R Plus, that is the one with the, the biggest. Uh, the first one has a, a 60K context window. It's the length of the input that is enough large for most of the cases. Command R Plus is uh, a bigger model from queer with a bigger, uh, if I remember correctly, is 128,000 uh, tokens. And I will enable a citation, for example, and I will add the rerun, for example, because I have one configured. One last parameter, so temperature. Well, temperature, I want to only to give a, um, a high level idea. Sometimes we want to experiment getting different answers to the same question. Why? Because then as human, we want to be assisted, not we want the assistant to, to make the choice for us. So I experiment, I get different answers, and uh, I then choose uh, which one is uh, the best. Uh, temperature control the creativity of the model. And higher temperature means that the model uh, uh, gives you more different kind of answer. And I will choose the collection that contains uh, the documents that I'm going to use. Then I am uh, choosing uh, the Excel sheet with uh, the list of questions. It will is a uh, short. Why oh, I don't show. Uh -huh. Sorry, I'm going to restart because as always during a new demo, there is some tricky things. Okay. Okay, and it is going uh, to start. Okay, and uh, as you can see, the processing has started. It will take uh, one minute, a very short uh, list of questions. And you see uh, it's uh, running in the bug mode. So it's processing, uh, it has already processed the, the first uh, uh, question and you see the first answer and now it is processing uh, the second question that asks uh, what is ID in the context of large language model. And uh, you see here, uh, it gives uh, information on the uh, progress uh, with a, a nice, uh, I hope so nice, nice uh, green ticks on, on, on the right. It, it, it will uh, soon uh, finish and I will show you the result on, on, on the right. Uh, to, okay, we see the, the answer on, on the right and we can uh, uh, give a closer look, for example, to show you what is this uh, uh, thing. Let me see if there is any questions. Okay, now I was looking at the chat to see if there was something I need to give a closer look. Okay, let's uh, see some additional information. First of all, I want to uh, clarify what is this uh, fine grain citation. Critical list uh, citation, I like to call it the fine grain citations. Let's see it uh, on a real example. So, for example, if we take the answer to the question number three, what is uh, JSON duality? JSON duality was a new feature regarding uh, JSON support in Oracle database. It's a feature that was added uh, to the 23C uh, version of the database. Well, you see uh, in the at the top, you see the answer to the questions and uh, at the bottom, you see the list of documents. What is fine grain citation? In classic RAG, let me use these uh, uh, terms, classic RAG, how can we say which are the documents uh, on which the 
as where it's based. It is because we do a semantic search on the vector store. The semantic search returns, let's say it's a fixed parameters normally, six documents. Then we say, okay, the answer is based on that six documents. But actually with the basic classic RAG approach, that's the only things that we can say. And if we want to be 100% sure that the answer is factually based on that documents, I need to read all the six pages. Okay. The nice things from these query models is that uh, with the answer, the models gives you not only the textual answer, the first part, the one that I have highlighted, but it gives you all, also the list of the pages of the documents actually used. And you see here is not six pages, but two pages. So if I want to check I don't need to go through six pages, but only these two pages. So that's the first part of fine-grained. It's easier for me to check uh, the link between the answer and the documentation and to check if the answer is correct. And also consider this part of the answer. You see this one that I have highlighted. Another benefit of JSON relational duality is the improved error handling. You see that in square bracket, we have two Two is the ID of only one of the two pages, the page 16. And so if I want to check uh, if this part of the answer is correct, uh, the model tells me that uh, this part is linked to what is contained in page 16. So it's easier for me to check uh, the correspondence. Behind the scene in the JSON document that is returned from the query models, uh, there is also a fine grain uh, list with uh, spans in, the, uh, in the, the answer, the beginning and the end of the sentences, and the ID of the documents. Consider that, uh, as always, uh, it that doesn't mean that you see your pieces of text taken. The language model is always, uh, uh, let's say, uh, rephrasing and uh, condensing all the information in the sentence, but it has been fine-tuned in order to do this additional task, provide a fine grain, the link between the pieces of the answer and the pieces of documentation. And it makes, in my, from my point of view, easier for you to check the, if the answer is factually correct and to provide, if needed, the, the documentation uh, in order to um, to ground the answer on the on, on your documentation, okay? Well, normally in a, in, the, in the real process uh, you could experiment. So, for example, uh, if you add another collection of documents, uh, you can rerun and see what is the answer based on other uh, pieces of documentation. That's part of the experience. Not always having all documentation in only one vector store is best approach because you know, uh, not always uh, the documentation is 100% coherent, especially if it has been developed uh, uh, during the time. And the evaluation part, the evaluation tool that I will show you in a minute uh, will give you some hints in order to understand if there are area where you can uh, improve, for example, the documentation and rerun uh, these, uh, these kind of tools, okay? Let's go to the uh, final part. First of all, before showing you the, um, the tool for the uh, the evaluation part, I want to summarize what we have seen, the characteristic of this solution. Multiple language support. Why? Because uh, uh, with uh, a library of prompt uh, translated and correctly with correct instruction, we ensure that the, even if the documentation is uh, in English, we have the answer in the target chosen language. We are implementing uh, some advanced drug functionality. Well, there are many different things and we will that can be uh, experimented. We have uh, in uh, generative AI also support for agent and uh, we will maybe be adding uh, agents in the next future. 
that it's simple because we need only to call uh, the entry point of the agent that, that manages uh, all the all the process with the query rewriting all the kind of things. We have uh, uh, used a vector store that is based on our 23i vector search. Well, to give you some additional information, uh, we are using the integration with the language chain. As always happens, uh, this library gives you the most the feature that are common to all the implementation. Uh, Oracle database uh, is based on SQL. You can do more things than all the feature that are supported in language chain. So what we have done is uh, we have extended for this tool uh, the Python classes, adding some functionality to get, for example, the list of collection, the list of documents in the collection. All the code that we called will be provided to you as an example, and you can use it if you want to start to developing your own uh, um, kind of tools. For language model, we give the choice of different kind, uh, different kind of language model, but the language model available are in a configuration file. So if you you want to restrict the language model available to your user, you need only to change the list in the configuration file. And additional things, uh, again, language chain does give you access to all the functionality to use uh, uh, the uh, fine grain citation we have used directly or, or our the, the Python SDK that Toro provides, okay, to give the access to additional feature. Then the final demo, that is uh, the number four. Yeah, we have, uh, again, I'm going to show you the, the command line. You see, the tool is again uh, a command line tool where we provide the input as an Excel set. What we want to achieve with the, this tool, we want to address a common task. We have prepared answer to a set of questions, and maybe we have used two different models. Let's call the model model one and model two. And we want again to use the documentation and generative AI in order to evaluate uh, based on several criteria, the two set of answers. For example, to have some hints on which one is the best to choose or some hints on what we can improve, for example, in the documentation. So I'm going to run it. Okay. While it's this running, uh, you see, I am going to comment it. So it is answered to the first question that is uh, Oracle AI to search. In order to not clutter uh, the, the, the screen, uh, the answer has not shown uh, there is a configuration parameter, but I will show you the, the final report uh, that is produced with all the question and the answer. You see here that the, uh, the answer are compared based on four different criteria. Accuracy, the completeness of the answer, the relevance of the answer compared to the question, and the clarity of the language that has been used. And you see also there are some information regarding uh, why this score. Basically, the approach that we are using is uh, LLM as a judge. As I said, the answer one has been given using a, a model model one, and the two, a second model, model two, and then using a third model, model three, to evaluate the, the, the three answer. And you see all the result here. And then uh, finally, it is produced uh, uh, something uh, as a, a final report. And if you want to have an idea, if I'm able, sorry, because I have uh, a phone that is uh, doing a video, so. This is one of the reports that is generated from the tool number three. I'm going to show you with the... Okay, you, you see, for the generation of all the answers, also the complete set of questions and answers have been stored in Markdown format. Markdown and also Excel format. At the end, we had decided not to give in this phase, a direct support to PDF because PDF uh, 
um, there are many choices. For example, the kind of font that you want to use, nothing that has really to do with the artificial intelligence, but uh, uh, is relevant. So we decided uh, to produce the output uh, with Markdown because, you know, it's easy then to translate uh, Markdown, uh, for example, in, uh, in, uh, in, in PDF. And uh, I think uh, I'm uh, almost on time. I have finished it, so I'll give you some uh, time for answering some questions. So if you have any questions. There's a couple on the on the Q&A. Um, uh, so one of them is, um, is it easy to extend this tool to take into account some online sources as open data on the internet? Yeah, it's not complicated. Um, again, it's all uh, Python code based on, uh, uh, there are some additional resources in the slide that we will provide and also with the link to the GitHub. Uh, it's Python code based on open source. So the knowledge that you need to extend is to know how to create uh, uh, a generative AI social solution based on language chain. If you want, we can also give you hints on how to use Lama index. So it's not difficult at least from our point of view, to extend this tool. To add uh, an online search uh, is not complicated. Uh, the best way to do that is uh, to use the support for, because you know, uh, uh, internet search uh, is uh, abstracted in this framework as a tool, and uh, the language model that uh, we are using support tool. So for example, uh, you can uh, uh, implement uh, an agent where for some kind of questions, uh, you run a tool that does internet search. You need only to define which kind of internet search you want to do, because for example, you want to restrict uh, what, what are the sites that you are going to visit because you don't want to get information uh, all around the web. Okay, but in my from my point of view, it's not that. And also, we will be sharing on our GitHub page uh, the, the, the steps and the code uh, that can be reused by our customers and our friends here on the, on the call. We, we've been getting asked about this. So I share the page, but yeah, you can elaborate a bit more. Yeah, yeah. For now, I have, uh, let's say, uh, a last minute finished the personal GitHub, uh, and uh, we will give you the link. Then uh, as soon as... Uh, we have sometimes we will publish in our official GitHub because in our team then we provide to the cast. And if you you are interested, there is an option to have a dedicated chat with us, talk with your sales team, and we can organize a dedicated session with you in order to see how you can get a customized version of this tool for you. Thank you, Luigi. Okay. All right. Uh, I see that we still have got two questions, two more questions in the Q&A, uh, Luigi. Oh. So is there a way to include any type of company document repository in vector search or is there any need of reworking data? What about documents saved and uh, image? OK, uh, well, the, to make uh, the semantic search uh, uh, effective, uh, there are some uh, processing steps. You need to uh, chunk the documents. So normally the process is that you take uh, the original documents from your corporate repository, and then uh, using uh, the tools that you have showed, uh, you do the, the chunking and then the bendings and do you do save it uh, in the collection in the vector store. Because the vector store provides the functionality uh, you need to have uh, for each uh, chunk of text, uh, the associated the embedding vectors. And so that's the reason I, why you need the vector store. But the answer is yes, you can start from the documentation in your corporate repository as uh, an input uh, for the loading in the vector store. And one more, <laughs> is the provenience or traceability data stored somewhere? I think you kind of showed that, but maybe you can just elaborate a bit. The Traceability of the answer is in the output that you get on the, uh, from the tools is not stored because uh, 
uh, you can try different uh, um, way of doing the question. But in the uh, report that I showed at the bottom of each answer, there were the traceability information, uh, the names of the documents uh, that are used to base, to ground the answer, and the number of the pages. So I think uh, th this is what you mean for traceability. Thank you. Thank you, Luigi. So let's jump to the useful resources part now because we are a bit over the hour. I promise I won't take more than two minutes of, uh, of your time. And I would like to start by launching the last question of, uh, of today. So this is about what other topics you'd like to see next in the cloud coaching events. Take a moment to, to reflect on the, the answers. By the way, you can take, you can multiple um, 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 topics there. And if you'd like to see something that we did not add, uh, feel free to uh, to answer and let us know what other things you'd like to see in the cloud coaching program. What uh, one important note is that we usually build the, the sessions at least two, three months ahead. So you won't see your uh, options uh, pretty soon. But we take into account all your needs and um, uh, the topics that were voted the most, and we try to bring them to the spot as early as, as possible. All right, a couple of more seconds. I see that people are still voting. And then we can jump to the, the last uh, couple of slides. I still have something really important to announce. So if you can, please stay at least one minute or so, um, because we have another surprise. Okay, I think it is stable now. I'm gonna end the poll. Uh, and the, the way I see it, uh, AI and application innovation was voted the most. I'm gonna share the results as we speak. Many thanks for, for answering the poll really really appreciate uh, that you took the time to to do that so regarding our upcoming events there are two places where you can um, find about them there is our events page cloud coaching pre cloud coaching events where you can go and register for uh, for the upcoming sessions then there is the developers events page where you can go as well and find about our cloud coaching events and there is also a third place um, which is the cloud, um, uh, the OCI community EMEA workspace on public Slack. Every time we publish new events, we uh, we invite you to to join us. So, if you are not there yet, feel free to to join our community and um, get notified whenever uh, new things are are coming. Next week, there is going to be a session on um, observability and management of uh, on uh, autonomous database with GenAI in OCI services. This will be delivered by our product management team in Oracle Autonomous Database. Very, very good session. And uh, there is a very uh, cool use case that Herman Viscuso will showcase in the live call. If you'd like to, to learn more about it, feel free to go to our page and register. The next uh, week, we talk about Oracle Apex and um, Select AI, and um, we will showcase also another cool demo with the um, um, uh, chat GPT. Um, yeah. So if you'd like to, to learn more about this other topic, uh, feel free to, to register to this event. Usually our events happens every, uh, happen every, every, um, Wednesday. I think somebody is uh, not muted. <laughs> All right. So every Wednesday, same hour as today, you will see a cloud coaching session in uh, in the schedule. Uh, let's see what else do we have. So regarding the surprise I was mentioning earlier, there is a possibility for you to book a private call with Luigi, a 20 minutes call. We only offer two uh, calls, namely boost one to one calls. Um, they are happening on the 16th of July from uh, 10.30 a.m. Uh, Central Europe Eastern uh, Time. If you'd like to discuss on the topic, bear in mind that this is not meant to replace any of the current workload discussions you might have, or of course not, not meant to replace a support call. 
Um, but if you have a specific thing that you'd like to uh, to discuss with Luigi, feel free to to book your slot and why not enjoy this 20 minutes um, call uh, with uh, with us. Um, I think Tom just shared the the Bitly link uh, on chat. Thanks, Tom, for for sharing it. Feel free to or of course scan the QR code that you see now on the screen uh, and uh, book your your boost call with with Luigi. Uh, here is another cool app that we have just launched on our OCI community public Slack, um, namely Oracle Cloud Adoption Bot. It was completely built on OCI Generative AI Services and Oracle Database 23 AI. Uh, it is helping us responding to your questions uh, on the go. So if you'd like to test it, feel free to um, just click slash um, um, uh, Oracle um, um, Cloud Adoption Bot, and then your question, and it will provide answers on the go. I know from Bogdan in our team that we just released the fourth version of it, so we are continuously working on improving the um, uh, the bot. But your feedback regarding uh, the, the how it, it's providing answers is really really uh, valuable. So if you see uh, see it go going mad, feel free to to either ping myself or, or Tom and uh, and share this with us. Uh, here is another thing um, that might be interesting for you. So until the 31st of July, we provide free certification for OCI Generative AI. So if you haven't done it yet, feel free to uh, to access the, the link here and get certified for, for free on, on Gen AI. Here is another uh, slide with a lot of materials and documents available for you to use. I'm not going to talk about them um, now, but bear in mind that a PDF version of this document that you saw today will be shared on Slack, uh, on the Cloud Coaching Events channel. In case you cannot join Slack for any reason, but you'd like to get it anyway, feel free to email us at the email that you see now on, on your screens and myself or Tom will uh, share it with you um, um, uh, ASAP. All right, if no further questions, and I see there, uh, there were some answers on chat, but hopefully we, we touched them all. Um, I would like to thank you all for joining us today. Thank you for raising these, these questions, interesting questions. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you, Luigi and the team for being here at Cloud Coaching. We hope to have you back soon. Um, and um, with that, I would uh, I would like to, to close the call. Enjoy the rest of the day. Bye bye and see you soon. Bye bye. Bye.